Welcome to Open Talk, an ongoing discussion of the state of photography in the age of COVID-19. I'm Travis Keyes, your host, also a photographer, a New Yorker, a Sony shooter, and chairman of American Photographic Artists New York. Each week I'll be joined by a diverse panel to talk about where we came from, where we're at, and where we may be going. We do these broadcasts live so you can participate and ask questions. So how did this come about, this project? You know, it's really interesting. We have had a lot of luck where um, we have been able to switch genres a lot from, like I said, from war to sports to Marvy's like, you know, mental health initiatives to underwater. And, you know, we'll, we'll get calls, be like, oh, do you want to do portraits of every single Democrat running for president? Be like, well, I'm not really a portrait photographer. We don't really use strobes. Like, I don't know anything. And so it's one of those things where just like we had to teach ourselves underwater work really quickly and go through that curve of how it works. Same thing happened with portrait work. And that honestly was pretty much the only assignment I had all of last year. It took an entire year to line all those up, to do the video portraits and and to do all those portraits. And and it consumed the entire year to do that. And I'm assuming you didn't have much time to shoot these with each person, but you had to have the same style on each one and it was in different places. So how did the whole, you know, stylistic approach come to you? Was it, you know, did you walk in knowing this is what I want to do or it was developed over well, time? When we, when we got the gig, we made a mood board and I kind of came up with a few different styles. And the first uh, two people that I photographed, which was, Pete Buttigieg and Tulsi Gabbard, yeah. uh, we, actually, we actually had about 10 different looks that I had two assistants at the time. And we spent two days trying to time and, and, and have these movements between all three of us to set up and go through these 10 looks in 10 minutes. So we would like bam, 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 and like move you know, and have, have like seamless that would like with a pull of a rope would like drop down and like, <laughs> and, and, and so for the, that, those first two shoots, we had 10 different looks. And then based on that, CNN, um, you know, said, okay, this is what we want, we want to do. And then at that point, um, you know, I only used two, two, two of the same assistants <laughs> for the entire shoot and we measured everything out. So you know, where everyone was going to be, what kind Down of to a science. Yeah. So it was like, you know, we would set, you know, and we'd have these mobile studios where we'd have to wrap everything in black and create these, you know, boxes that trap the light and do all this stuff. So, you know, tell me that. I mean, it, it, what's bizarre is tell me that doesn't feel like a lifetime ago. I mean, from, yeah. going in the, does, I mean, it must feel like, I mean, we're still in that same presidential election and that must feel like, you know, like years ago and we're still in the same presidential election. It's crazy. We started in March of last year and uh, my last shoot was like February. Bloomberg in Je no, January. January like 2nd or something like that. You know, so it was, um, it, there was a lot. Was, were, there, were there any of the, 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 Corona. any of the candidates you weren't sure that you were going to get or that were difficult or it was like, ah, oh, we no, just I got this I one? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if, You're not allowed to say If that. I should... <laughs> If I should reveal that, yeah, right. wink, wink. <laughs> who, who I, I will say who was awesome. Yeah, Cory Booker was amazing. Amazing. He's only, yeah. He's only run yeah, into a burning yeah, building twice to save people, and like recorded a message for Marvy uh, and like the kids. Like he was just great. Um, he was really good. So, so uh, you know, again, changing of uh, changing our genres, being this jack of all trades. Uh, Sony approached us with their new camera phone, which is amazing for shooting. Is this the Xperia 2? This is the Xperia. Uh, this, actually, this one was the Xperia 1. And okay. now, now we're shooting something with Xperia 2. Awesome. And, and um, you know, so, so Marvy came up with this idea that we were going to be this sh short video about the circle. Super conceptual. And, and we actually ended up producing it. It was in our house. Um, the whole lockdown happened in the middle, in the middle of, of shooting it. So we really had to contain everything within our home. We ordered like a ton of circular oriented things from Amazon. And we totally produced this shoot and made it 
all in and our house. Yeah, it started it started with the neighborhood kids, but then the uh, lockdown happened, so then it was just our kids. It, it was really an and uh, us. Yeah, and us like that was my hand. That's me twirling. It just it ended up just being us at, at in the middle of it because well, let's let's check it out. So basically, it's really just an ode to the circle, right? This this uh, this this shape that has been with us, and it's in nature, but also um, we we mimic it in 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 inorganic ways as well, and and it's just yeah, yeah. it's just an ode but, to the circle. But you know, like shooting this first of all, super conceptual, which we don't usually do. Right. But second of all, there was so much so much like problem solving and how we wanted to shoot things. And it was such a good exercise in figuring one of my favorite shots is dropping the antacid into that glass, which is shot from above where we ja drag like, you know, the glass off our kitchen table and we're shooting underneath it and, you know, holding different color lights or like the slinky, which was just me going like this with the camera up and down, <laughs> Arby, like having the lights and we're just bouncing up, you know, <laughs> um, bouncing up and down. And, you know, so it was like really solving those problems and, and pulling it together. Did you enjoy the whole conceptual type of thing? Is it something you want to dive more into? Is it, uh, or do you really yeah, like that? Yeah, it was fun. I think, um, you know, I think uh, the when I when when I next up is a square. Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that came from Jen. Sugarman. We're really going inside the box this time. <laughs> oh yeah, exactly. No, that came from Jen Sugarman. She said, you know, this is what you're working with, and I was really trying to figure out how we can shoot something that can will be interesting but allows us to you know with with what we had with just that phone camera what can we yeah. do with with a phone camera and so i thought like something that was more conceptual would be easier and, and what's out well it, i've got to play with the xperia one and not the xperia two yet but uh it, the amount of stuff they're throwing in that camera it is literally becoming a pocket cinema it's becoming a it, it, you can tie it into your cameras yeah, you, the, it's just incredible two, which we have now we got yeah uh, testing version and we have to shoot a film that we haven't totally figured out what to do yet but it shoots uh 4k 10 bit 60 which is insane my the normal sony cameras yeah. doesn't do, do that <laughs> and you know and, and and you know there are some quirks there's some stuff to figure yeah. out like we have a couple of cages they don't exactly fit it you know nd filters all that yeah. stuff but it's um it is uh a, 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 a you know, it's an amazing little tool that, you know, yeah. is handy to have. Um, Here's the big question. Who got the pleasure of pieing you in the face? Uh, so Marvie was shooting Actually, it yeah. and my nephew pied me in the face. Did your nephew <laughs> just love every second of it? I love yeah, that. You can hear him laugh. <laughs> but, but my face smelled for like a week. Like you cannot get the smell of whipped cream. Uh, at awesome. least you didn't use shaving cream or something like that. You know? It might, might have been a better idea. That might have been a better <laughs> We actually really went with the whipped cream. Yeah, we got, yeah. yeah. So... I know you're delving into, you know, obviously as photographers right now, we're looking for projects and, and trying to find our place in this world with COVID and stuff like that. I know you're working on a project right now. I'm going to bring up the, the first slide and maybe you can tell me about it. Well, you know, I, we live in New Jersey and I'm not living in New York City. I had one assignment where I shot a, a video piece, which I think you'll show later, or two assignments where we did video in, in the city. But I think there was this idea that like, you know, I want to stay safe. I want to stay home. I have kids. I'm not, you know, I'm not getting New York Times journalism assignments right now. And, right. but I still, you know, I'm always looking, I'm trying to tell stories. And a lot of my career, whether it was my oil on water work that I did after Deepwater Horizon or the book I did in Iraq, a lot of it is about a repetitive photograph. And I think I, I very much like doing repetitive series as a way to like document um, 
sort of a, a escape of, 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 of things. And I just saw all this detritus uh, of, of uh, sitting around where, you know, people aren't wearing that many gloves anymore. So I'm not seeing them all that yeah. much, but like they're, they were everywhere for a while. And I would go out and spend time walking around, even in suburban New Jersey, photographing all these gloves. And it was a real exercise in creativity and composition and finding these right backgrounds because I'm not moving anything. I, you know, I, I have this strict sense of I need to photograph it where it lies. So, it, and, you know, finding that and, 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 and really playing with it. Um, so initially was it, was it, was it out of disgust and kind of documenting it or was it, you know, like delving in your head, like why are people like, you know, just dropping these? Are they scared of the disease or why are they just dropping the, you know, a, a virus everywhere? It's like, what, what was the kind of initial? It was, uh, it was, it was like, you know, we're going through this pandemic and this is something new, you know, it, it, it's, it, it's, it's hard to really conceptualize and photograph this thing about COVID beyond the obvious of what's in front of you. Um, and, and I wanted to try and tell it in a different way because I'm not hanging out in hospitals right now. I have, you know, these two little kids at home and Marvie and, and, you know, I, I didn't want to bring that home and put myself into quarantine. So like how, you know, what can I do and what tells the story to me besides, you know, people buying toilet paper. Yeah. Um, and so for me, it was this, these are my stand-ins for the disease. Do you, uh, as a journalist, and so, certainly one has, has done conflict in wartime, do you see stuff like on the news right now and like, you know, Minnesota take, for example, right now, you know, erupting and stuff like that because, you know, the, the t terrible killing. Do you feel like, man, I'd love to be on a plane and be right there shooting? Do you have that itch in you and kind of talk yourself back down? Or I do Parachute still want original. to do photojournalism in many ways. Like I still would, you know, love to get an assignment to – you know, cover something, but at the same time, um, I'm wrestling with if, if I have moved on from that. And, yeah. and I ask myself that all the time. Like I, I still look at Instagram, I still look at photo agencies and I look at the work people are doing and some of it I really like and some of it I, I think, you know, do I want to go back and do these things? Um, is there is there one you feel you missed? Like you got that phone call from the Times like we want to send you here like uh, that. Yes, I'm, I'm on the plane tomorrow. <laughs> um, you know, have I gotten it or have I? No, is there one that, like, you, you know, like ah, that one kind of got away. Like I, I would love to be on that. Like I, that is the one thing I've always wanted to shoot. Just you know, never, never lined up. Uh, you know, right now it, it's not, I mean, I, I still, I really want to go to Antarctica and I, it's very hard to get there without an yeah. assignment that costs, you know, 10 to $20,000. And that's kind of one of the things that I really want to do right now. Um, and, and, but that's purely from a wildlife and underwater sort of perspective. But in terms of, of documentary work, um, I don't know, you know, it's, yeah. it's been, it's been a while and I've, I've sort of really worked hard to in, in a way stop yearning for that because I think it negatively impacted our life and, our relationship in many ways and uh, and I, I uh, but also I think it's like the hubris right like who why think that you're the only teller you know especially in in, in kind of parachute journalism type of um, scenarios like why are you the one who needs to be this person right. documenting so I mean I'm very are. much aware of the white now more than ever and I think part of that is because I married someone who's not white um, yeah. I know. Yeah. Um, but it, you know, I, I, I am breaking, breaking news. <laughs> yeah, I, I am very aware that like, uh, and I'm trying to be more aware of it. And I'm not saying like I'm the social justice warrior sort of thing, but I, yeah. I, woke. I, You're not woke. I, I am aware that I bring a white gaze, weight gaze from the Western world. Yeah. yeah. And I have to try and find my way past that. I mean, I still love, assignments and I want those kind of travel assignments where you just go someplace and it's basically street photography in another place to make it look cool. Sort yeah. of like very Alex Webb approach. To me, that still resonates and I still want to do that. And it's finding that opportunity. Of course, you know, no one's going anywhere right now. So I'm just photographing my kids on the toilet or playing video games. Do you find you guys as a, as a team now looking for more projects that, uh, you know, you work together and, and how, what, are, what kind of projects are you looking for so that you, you collaborate and how is that collaboration? I think. Like, Marvie tells me what to do. And I just... <laughs> 
No, I think something like that, like what you just saw, um, you know, where we, we bring in the travel, which Ben really likes. And it's this, this idea of um, whenever I travel, whenever Ben traveled, we always would call each other and say, I wish you were here. Yeah. Right. And, and we both have that feeling about our kids. So doing a lot of the work like that, that you just saw, or even doing the piece, like the circle video where the kids were involved. Um, it's just shared experiences. And I think these are the kind of experiences that Ben and I have always wanted. We've always wanted to travel, not just for the sake of traveling, but for the sake of learning, but it's not really fun to learn on your own. And yeah. especially when you have kids, you, you want to learn it with the kids um, because the way they see things, the way they react to just, you know, a shark or a whale breaching, it's just so awesome that you're as excited. <laughs> yeah. about. I mean, like we, 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 this didn't make the book that we just did, but like a couple of weeks ago, our kids went through their first live concert, but it was in Fortnite. So there was, oh, a, wow. there was a live concert with um, Travis Scott. Travis Scott in Fortnite, and that was their first concert but, ever. But watching and them, they were just, amazed. Their faces they were like screaming. Oh my like, god! Oh my, what is happening? So you know, like so many people right now, photographers are stuck at home. Everyone's like documenting their family. Right? Yeah. You know, um, you know, I we, I have a friend of mine who just came out with a little book because he lives on a farm, um, you know, in the middle of, uh, I forget which country, in, in Sweden, oh. Norway, uh, Nick Haynes. Um, oh, so, you know, of like really interesting photos of his twin daughters, like playing with the family pig. It's right. like, oh shit, like we don't have that. We have like PlayStation 4 and, you know, bad allergy attacks. And, uh, you know, cause they're inside and we have like our fat dogs. And it's like, you know, so everyone is like documenting their family now because it's right there. But like part of it is, yes, we want to document it. Yes, to me, I still want to do like a traditional photograph of like, you know, our family. And then at the same time, we're like, well, we have to do it a little bit differently. We have to like try and, 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 and approach this differently because that's, to be honest, the only way to really push yourself and stand out. When, so talking about that, especially photographers that are kind of stuck at home now and, and kind of have that block. And, and I think like I've, I've always talked about on open talk that uh, it, there's never been a time that on a global scale that we're all going through the same thing at once. And that uh, is a momentous moment. And anything that is documented as an, as an artist right now is part of the collective and the archive that's going to down in history. How does someone kind of find their way to inspiration and shooting? Like, what are you, what are you looking towards when you're trying to create a project? Is it just, you know, you kind of brainstorm or you just, it comes to you or what are your rituals? For me, I always, like I always speak about it from my point of view because it's always been personal stories for me. Um, and for a while, when I was still, you know, considered myself like a hardcore photojournalist, I always thought personal stories and, per, you know, per, uh, self portraits were very um, uh, self uh, absorbed. And it wasn't until I did that project of, of my own, you know, depression that I realized that. You, yeah, again, like I said, you're speaking about the universal through the personal and that they resonate more with people. And so that's where I start. I start from my own experience. And that's really, Ben really wanted to do something with the kids. And, you know, we knew that we could only do something with the kids. So then it became a story of what are our own experiences. So this goes to the next slide. But, but, I, but, but I think one of the things that works, like I would never recommend a married couple of both photographers. Like, I, I wouldn't. I mean, <laughs> can, you, can one of them be a doctor or something like that? But I will say, like, we are both each other's muse in a way. And we'll, like, at the end of the night when we're in muse, bed, muse, 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 um, we will, we will kind of delve into our perspectives and kind of almost in a way brainstorm, like, how do we approach this? This would be a good idea. That would be a bad idea. And, you know, I think, you know, we're still thinking because we're here, we're home. Like, what do we do? Um, you know, uh, and, and, and it's in a way, it's like what our kids do as well. Um, like, uh, I would say we hear them talking to Alexa all the time, or we hear them, you know, playing, you know, 
you know, lockdown with their Legos. Uh, or, you know, uh, our oldest son is quite um, OCD and will mm-hmm. go back and forth between addicted to, you know, one kind of thing that he wants to do and then um, will, you know, vacillate and spend the whole day doing another thing. And like we see that and then we talk about, um, you know, how um, can we do something about that? How can we talk about this experience which may be unique to us and maybe not? Well, I just so, sent a link of the new project that we did. Actually oh, awesome. Uh, so what, what is it? I mean, obviously you, you, you said, oh, I, we don't recommend two photographers. You know, what is it that re- really drew you guys together? Was it the love of photography or was it some kind of bond that like she gets me on a level? Like what was the connection that really kind of brought you guys and keeps you guys together? I don't think Sex. it's photography. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're going to go into the videotape now. <laughs> photography i think we have a lot of, even though we grew up in two different worlds um we have a lot of similar um traumas childhood traumas <laughs> um, um so we get each other yeah. in that sense and i think you know in a way um marvy is a very type a personality and and you're I'm, not i'm i no, <laughs> like i would say this marvy is a type a personality in terms of interpersonal relationships and how she deals with her emotions, but maybe not in the same way with her art. Yeah. And not as ambitious with her art. And I, no, 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 I'm not, I, I'm not, oh, yes. I, no, I mean, no, 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 you know how like I shoot all, it was all downhill from you here. <laughs> when you have something. What I feel? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. Oh, God. God. Okay. That was the wrong word. To Let me, Wait, all right, we're going to cut that. Right, we'll wait, rewind. Wait, okay. Wait a second. I'm very proactive about shooting constantly. Okay. But emotionally, I'm not that they person. shut off. Right. And so and, I think, and she has that in spades. Like there's I, an empathy I, I think, and a connection level. Like, that's, there are two types shoot, of married. I can't shoot um, for the sake of shooting. Or, yeah, know. exactly. Or like you just don't want to like, jump in and swim with sharks. You know? Well, you threw me in the water. I know, right? She's not as adventurous. But <laughs> I, would, I would say this. I think that God, she's- Oh my God, man. How many insults are you going to throw at me? Beautiful, oh. and I love you. Yeah. Well, it's time to go yeah, to the next yeah. video. Um, <laughs> but I would say, um, you know, there are two types of married couples. There are the married couple there's where- There's only two? No, I would say personality-wise. There are two married couples where they're completely the same types of individuals, and you- find that like you get along with them because you're so similar we definitely and then along. and then they're they're married couples where the couples are completely fucking different yeah. and sorry i cursed but it's um right. but and like you this add, youtube video is not safe for children <laughs> you know? so i think that's it like we're so different in many ways that we add things to each other and we both do we we, we bring in things to each other that we wouldn't have had on her not own. Ambitious in my no, head. That's not ambitious. That's not, it was the wrong wow. word. That's not what I was saying. That's, that's, uh, you could say, you could be 35 compliments. You, that one word is going to stick out. You're done. You're done. <laughs> let's, let's go to the next video. At worst, worst case scenario, it could be the flu. I feel like the more I learn about the this, the less York, there is the to worry. The fight to it's save a new virus. virus. It's a new virus. It's a new strain of virus. virus. We have virus. 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 much slower to spread it. We've seen virus. 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 some dangerous virus that is moving across the world from one
So tell me about this project. Um, uh, and initially started, um, we wanted to do another episode with uh, the kids uh, here at home, uh, the same way we did like any of our other episodes with the kids um, as part of a project, like how they're handling <coughs> uh, the lockdown. And uh, I, I, I thought that I really needed some B-roll to establish, um, you know, what was happening that we could sort of segue into and talk about. And I went into the city to shoot a little B-roll. I ended up getting an assignment for a client uh, to shoot some more in the city, kind of like these empty landscapes and what's happening. And, um, you know, I went in a few times and like built up a bunch of work. And then I had another assignment to work for IMC, the International Medical Corps, to go into some of the hospitals as well. And so at the end, you know, we wanted to make a small piece. And I think we're very much into video these days, um, obviously. And I, I think, you know, depending on what the music is, and I think Marvy made an amazing choice, um, that it's a little bit more resonant than just still pictures of people in masks, yeah. even my gloves on the ground, because it's so eerie. And I think, for this particular situation, I, I, th I think video is a lot stronger because it's this invisible enemy where everyone's scared. But, you know, how do you translate that anxiety, anxiety in a still picture? I think it's, it's not as effective as, as showing it through video. And so, you know, as we, you know, I went back and forth and Marvy talked about ideas of how to approach this, you know, this kind of came together between her and me and, um, you know, my, our, our nephew who, um, you know, work, works, yeah, it, it, it does some editing for us. Um, you know, we kind of developed this, this, this vision. So I want to talk about this project on, on the many different levels, because you have a going out there as an, as an artist creating something, B you're, you're a family member that's going out and possibly touching things that are COVID related, bringing them home. What's your, 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 what's going on in your head in, in, in that. And also, um, you're a New Yorker and seeing your city in a state that we've never seen it before. How are all of these things playing in your head and, and influence what you're doing and how are you dealing it as an artist and like the family dynamic of like, do I come home and where do I put my gloves and how do I, you know, clean myself off? Like what is all this process? Uh, well, I think in, in terms of going out and coming home, we were really clear about the process of how we would, how I come back into the house. He had to strip naked. Before yeah, he basically on the porch. On the and, back deck. And like every single bit of the camera, uh, the gear, everything was wiped down. Uh, so I think we were, we were, you know, and the clothes went straight into the washing machine. We were very, very clear about how we would do that. Yeah. And then I was really, really conscious about what I was doing um, while I was out shooting. Um, you know, never touched my phone. You know, uh, it was always wearing, you know, our, our, our PPE that we had, that we were lucky enough that I have a very robust first aid kit from even my days of doing conflict work. And we had tons of gloves and we already had mats. So, you know, we had a lot of that stuff already. And I think um, it was just a matter of trying to be really, really careful. Yeah. Um, I didn't use a viewfinder on the camera because I didn't want to put anything up against my eye. Um, I was actually using a cinema camera, so I had to hold it a little bit lower. Uh, you know, and it was even like when I did shoot in the subway, I did not touch a thing. And, and you know, I was very conscious of not, of not doing that. And it was, um, you know, and I think the last day that I shot, Marvy really, really didn't want me to go. And uh, that kind of created a stream. Yeah, us. it was it was it was like conflict. It was like Libya all over again. It was it was a, a good week's worth of like she being pissed off at me. Yeah, and I think he he opened up about that in one of the blog posts that we had. But um, yeah, it 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 was a strain because he wanted to go back. You know, this this feeling that he had to prove himself that he he wasn't scared. Again, you know, I don't like, think it was that. I mean, it was the same like looking at all, all your colleagues are doing and saying like, okay, I'm not, this is the biggest story of the next 20 years of a generation. Yeah, but you also didn't right. want to be blackballed. But I think, you know, yeah. I think that's what it was for me. It was, yeah, it, like, you know, it was like saying, you know, we had a client who like hung up the phone on us and said, I'm being negative because I, I didn't want to, 
you know, go back and, and get my, you know, and at the same time you do that once and they'll never hire you again. And, yeah. and, and, you know, it's the same with war photography. As soon as I said, I'm not going back to Afghanistan, no one calls you. Um, and, and, and that's hard when you know, I know that we have mortgage due or we have credit card bills or all that stuff. So d- diving deeper into to all of that, like, you know, where do you think you, you went from a point where like, wow, we're working all the time to suddenly realizing the world just changed on us. And where are you in terms of like, I, it took me a long time to realize, you know, like that change, like, I had gotten to this point in my whole life and everything was this way and going forward, there's a new normal and time to wrap my head around that. Where are you in this process of what's the future of the industry? What do you feel like, you know, were, were there dark periods? Like, you know, you just kind of sunk into your bed one day and just like, I want to shut off the world. Where, what was the process for you going, realizing like the world just changed? Um, I think it wasn't, we didn't have enough time to really settle into that thought because we have the kids, right? And so you have to be just, you don't even have time to breathe or even anything like that. The kids had to be home. They had to go to school. We had to continue paying the, the rent in the office as well as the mortgage in the house. And so I think for us, it was either create just for the sake of being create just for the sake of creating um and figure out how to get clients on board and so we had to be really really nimble like on our website we created a produce in place um page and um we started really contacting people and saying this is how we can produce these things for you in our home safely and we are the talent um our dogs are the talent our kids are the talent Ban, you know, I mean, whoever. and we're reaching out to all kinds of people. We're reaching out to like kayaking companies or like food, uh, you know, delivery services saying like, oh, we can do all these different types of stuff. And, and um, it's about being proactive and yeah. thinking on our feet, like, what can we do? How yeah. can we do this? You, you just know? have to be really It's even like it. putting our dogs on a Roomba and saying, oh, this would <laughs> be like an interesting, Again, you yeah, know. For the Roomba. And I think, uh, and the, the, the good thing about having worked in different genres and starting in photojournalism is that you know how to think on your feet, right? Yeah. But you also have a background in marketing and advertising, so you know how to direct and you know make a creative the way they want to do it. Um, so now we've really been able to, for a long time, a lot of reps say, oh, we don't know how to rep you because you're so diversified. And now it's actually gotten to the point where they need that it's good for us that we're diversified yeah. because we can create anything for any client. Right. Yeah. It's just a matter of people understanding that, you know, we don't have totally specialized, which, you know, a lot of clients want you to be totally specialized, uh, but that, you know, we're, we can be, I don't want to call ourselves a, a jack of all trades, but that we're nimble enough and creative enough that we can, you know, dive into different genres, whether that's and portraits or yeah, and video or underwater. Yeah. 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 How are you uh, adapting yourselves as, you know, a business and, and as partners and as a, you know, a company producing this stuff to not only kind of say, Hey, we're ready to go out and shoot. Are we, you know, are, are, are you certifying yourself in health or like, what do you think the future of, of photography is going to become and how are you prepping yourself to enter into it? Well, I, I think for at least the time being, uh, in terms of let's say commercial projects, you're going to have to prove that you can do it safely um, and that you can have a small crew. And we've always had a small crew. Yeah. And, it's essentially been me yeah. and Ben. Um, yeah. And I think, you know, we're, sh- we can show through what we do, like all these different projects we've done in the last few weeks that we can accomplish and do these things safely and from our own house. And yeah. We've set up a bunch of different scenarios and sets within our home and with our, our students. And, and, and this is, seems the perfect time to jump into one of those pictures. I don't know why. It just seems the perfect time to jump into one of those. <laughs> yeah, so this is a book that we recently finished. And I, I think I sent the link on um, on the all panel. Um, uh, uh, in the chat? Yeah, in the chat. Yeah. I sent the link to that book. We, we just finished that. We, this was all shot with the Sony Xperia. Oh, wow. And, um, and then we turned it into and we turned it into an illustration. But I think the funny part about this is that we got this about three weeks before it was due, and the rhyming part 
actually took about two and a yeah, half that weeks. took us really because they're, they're all limericks they're, it's an yeah. a to z oh wow oh, so, <laughs> so so this, this is, one this yeah. is working from home which i think was the was the was the easiest one where we came up this with. one now, did, you, did you already have those slippers or did that was a, a, a an I, I order. that was that a, was my birthday present <laughs> that's awesome year. but i will say like everything in this scene was set up mm -hmm. from the books to the coffee cup behind me to like the toothpaste hanging off the sink we were we were very much trying to make this like a jumbled kind of scene uh that um also was like the stand-in for you know working at home and and, <laughs> I, I, and that lens flare is real yeah that's actually uh what the the that's what happens every time he pulls that's down what his pants every time. <laughs> I'm Jewish. it just you know, blows it, uh, <laughs> It's there's actually music too. In that <laughs> okay, so this one says, um, kids are being loud, spresh is almost due, trying to avoid trying to avoid the crowd, you escape to the loo, zooming with a tie on, the toilet full of poo. And like imagine us trying to come up with these All lines at like two in the morning. <laughs> and it's like iambic pentameter? Yeah. yeah no, we were like <laughs> but the great thing about it is that there's actually a website for everything. So there's a website there's for There's a rhyming, rhyming website. Oh my God. There's a website for counting syllables. the syllables. Yeah. So we, <laughs> we had a lot of All help the trying to figure you can get. out the, the, the text that goes on with the photos. And how much are, are, are the kids uh, collaborating in this process and are, and are they enjoying it and, and really kind of coming up with ideas and really yeah. kind of enjoying it? I mean, there's it? some, obviously, like this picture was just Marvy and me shooting that. But let's say this one, you know, we, I, we knew right away that Q was going to be for like <coughs> quarantine and then became quarantine queen. And uh, I knew that we, I wanted to have it look like a queen thing where Marvy was sitting on this throne and they were feeding her grapes and fanning her. And then Mateo was like, why use a fan when we could just have a, an electric fan? It's like so and much. That's, that's like, one that's of my favorite parts of the picture is him holding the electric cheap. fan. Yeah. We're acting in a just <laughs> yeah, we're, we had like these real fans from the Philippines. And he was like, well, let's make a modern take out of it. And we're like, that's yeah. so brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> and then we were like, oh, let's do a toga. So he wore a toga. And then Caleb came down and be like, why don't I just wear my flash robe and like have <laughs> one of our hang up? And then we just dropped in uh, the Game of Thrones thrown behind marvy you know <laughs> and and it was just like okay finally you know just came together uh and we had this way of like our dog noodle is like the garden gnome of the project so she's <laughs> wormed her way into almost every scene you gotta find it like it's the new where's waldo <laughs> and we're actually you know we're gonna drop some of these on instagram and we're gonna show what the inspirations are like that's oh sansa, it's so great that's sansa uh and her leather jacket as well so that's one of the inspiration out there. You know, so so this is in the same bathroom that, you know, the the work from home was in, but you know, we totally styled this up differently. Obviously the shelves are still there and And this you know, is this is my favorite part. I really loved rhyming this because I Ben really wanted to have dingleberries in it. So it's what some hoard toilet paper, some use soap and water. Spray the dingleberries like in France and Buenos Aires. Um, so I really wanted, he really wanted to have dingleberries in it. And so I was like trying to figure out what rhymes with <laughs> dingleberries. And it was Buenos Aires. Um, and, and, you know, this spurred a conversation offline with us about the bidet. That was one of my big projects. I, you know, ordered a bidet and installed it. And you know, that was a big deal for me. It was like, well, we, this we, week I installed I, a bidet. <laughs> we've had that for so long that this toilet paper is so old. Because <laughs> we don't, we don't really use toilet paper in the house anymore. Well, we do. Oh, but that's that funny. Yeah. That and might. this one you didn't send to me, but I, I saw it on your post and I had to include it because it's fabulous. So this was our favorite one to do. It was definitely Marvy's idea. I, 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 we did make it into a zoo. Like it was <laughs> always going to be zoo. And I was trying to use, because the Sony Xperia has a built-in augmented reality feature, as well as um, if you Google certain animals, uh, you can create, uh, on your mobile, like if you Google tiger, it'll say, do you want to see the tiger in 3D? And you can create, and you can place a tiger, a life-size tiger anywhere within your home. And so I was taking frames of that because I was like, oh, you know, um, yeah, you know, I put like an octopus in our toilet bowl. I put a shark, <laughs> like, 
you know, our, uh, our sink. And yeah. like, I wanted to get the kids interacting with animals. And I thought I, I didn't like, I didn't, didn't like I that. hated it. I thought it was the, the worst way to end. Like you have to end with a bang. And I said, you know, what about this photo by Philip Paulsman? And instead of the cats, we have Noodle. because She's our garden gnome anyway. Yeah. And, and then we put every element. Every, every single element <laughs> in all the other photographs we put in, is in somewhere in that frame. Be it yeah. toilet paper, video game controllers, like everything, you know, the sewing machine. From A to Z, yeah, basically. Yeah, everything is in there somewhere. And then separately, we photograph Noodle flying in the air. Yeah, and like uh, that, then and, then that kind of, and Caleb became Dali, but like that, that the, you know, the, the clock in the background. We painted beforehand. We painted, but no, I want to say this though, because the clock in the background and the real painting, that clock is not seven o'clock. It's like 6.45 or something in the real painting. We made it seven o'clock because seven o'clock is the time where, you know, the first, people. First, the, the, the medical people, workers medical, are cheered. The, yeah, workers cheered. So we changed that a little bit. Um, but yeah, so there are a lot of like little, um, what were the, the Easter eggs uh, in there, um, oh. that you can find. But that it's, was it's so fabulous. And, uh, you know what, I, I want to dive into one more video with the kids because I could watch them all day and I think it's so, just so wonderfully and, and inspiring. So we're going to go into one more. It is under a wide open sky. It's helpless and cold. Is that where we are? It was never really a question of if your dad and I were going to take you to Kenya. It was just a matter of when. Oh my God, it's a baby. Kenya was where we started making movies together. It was where we realized that how we saw the world side by side was more vibrant than anything we could ever experience apart. Why the wildebeest cross the road? To get to the other side. How do we get out with the wildebeest and the zebra? Do lions eat zebras? Why, why the lion cross the road? To eat the wildebeest. Mateo, I know that school has never been easy for you, but I want you to understand that you can be both student and teacher. Did you know that we were in the Rift Valley? The Rift Valley is where a bunch of rocks come out. The most common rock are uh, mica. Um. The lessons we can give you outside of the classroom are going to be worth their value in gold. Obsidian. Why do animals poop wherever they want, Daddy? Do the wildebeest have a good memory? Would it be scary if a bald eagle ate your head? What's a termite? Are they dangerous? You eat them? Why do you want to see the circle of life? It's death. A baby! A newborn! That's a newborn! Right over there! Daddy, did you hump mommy when you got married to her? To, to make, make a baby? baby. <laughs> I finally know. Caleb, your confidence is enviable. This is crazy. Mr. Elia, why are lions called lions? Because they're always lying around. This is a Kenyan green hat. Toothbrush. It is, it's spicy. It's, yeah, it's spicy. It's a toothpaste and a toothbrush itself. Can you order them online? No, you can't. But this can last even one year. Can we bring some back to America? How do you learn how to make a fire? Whoa, how do you do that? Do you learn how to fight in school? Can we learn how to be a warrior? Are there people that are Messiah in America? Don't ever stop asking questions. What about the girls? Why can't they fight? We can only hope that on this trip, you'll have learned what matters the most that in learning about the animals, the land, and its people, you also picked up on the importance of family.
Flash is faster than a cheetah because the Flash can go in Flash time where it freezes everything, even a cheetah. Does that get you every time you watch it? I mean, it just doesn't, it never gets old. <laughs> well, we have to listen to our kids every day. So. <laughs> They're not as cute right now. <laughs> I can imagine, okay. right? We're like, Dad, can we play Fortnite? <laughs> uh, are these adventures going to continue? I hope so. I mean, we are trying to get it picked up, but from <laughs> we've, we've, we've actually gotten rejected, we've gotten from so, rejected many venues. so many times um, um, that for some reason I have a feeling that it's never going to happen unless we make well, it. Well, I have to tell you, you might have the best time now ever because that they got stalled out on content. They're going to be looking for content real quick. I, I don't know, man. I really yeah, feel I, we just I, got our last sec, last, like our latest rejection yesterday from someone who really, really liked it too. They're like, yeah. we don't think it's we a good time to do family gonna, you know, content. We don't know right how now. it's gonna sell. So that's where we are. We really it's, it's gotta it. be one of those things, man. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be showing it to every damn person I know because I wanna watch that every every week. It's just well, it's it's, business people. Don't show it to photographers. I mean we No, no, I I used to show work in the film industry. I know I know producers and stuff like that. Yeah. So. I mean <laughs> the thing is like also are we gonna be traveling yeah you know much it, 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 you know but it doesn't have to be travel. It can just be their questions about identity. Well about and, and their... I think that's what you know we're also aiming to do this piece on coronavirus as well. We've gotten creative we made something funny we did the video in the city from a journalistic point of view. And now, you know, we might also, you know, we're collecting footage here at home, you know, so we might have a talk with them and, and pull together another piece based on being here and being locked down and having this be the world for the next few months. Yeah, so, because they just have yeah. fascinating questions. I mean, like the last question Mateo asked was, you know, during Passover, what not the last question, but one of the interesting questions was during Passover where, his um, his grandfather said that um, you know Jews have been um, they, there have been bigotry and there has been anti-Semitism for a long time and people are always trying to kill Jews but God um, is there to protect us and he said but what if God's a Nazi and I thought that that was a really interesting question. I mean, he um, sort of is in a way. <laughs> And so, you know, because that opens a lot of, of, of conversation when, when it comes to religiosity and supremacy. And there's just so many things that you can talk about. With and just and that of one course, question. this happens because our Passover is a whole Zoom Passover because no one was going anywhere. So there was that you know, unique perspective. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, 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 one of the last questions I usually ask on Open Talk, and I'm going to skip to it right, right here because uh, we are getting closer to the end, is uh, what have you seen in the last week or two that has really kind of given you hope? And, and those videos, they give me hope for the future and they give me a smile and they give me, you know, a you know, promise that uh, even at, uh, you know, when the darkest tunnel and how long it's going to be, there's light at the other side. And hopefully it's not a train coming at you, but it's, <laughs> but uh, so what, you, what have you guys seen in the last week or two that just restored your, your faith or just made you laugh or just kind of gave you hope? Um, that's a good mm. question. So you know, I, I you know every night when we eat dinner, we have we have this tradition. We do something called high point, low point, where uh, you know we each go around table. What is our high point of our day, and what is our low point of our day? And I think you know for the last week, we've been really all about high points because we're a family and we're together. And our kids, you know, have abandoned their bedrooms and are just sleeping in our room with us and the floor of our room, you know, and, um, you know, uh, they're, uh, you know, as much as they fight, there are also some amazing moments where they crawl into bed with us in the morning and they just say, I love you. And, yeah. um, you and, know, and, and the thankful for think that thankful for part is really important. I think now, yeah. especially now, because, um, it's so hard to understand, to keep perspective, especially when you're home, you're not really talking to everyone. Um, and you think like you're, you're, you're going through so much shit, right? Um, but you don't really realize how much harder it is for other people out there. Um, and thankful for part is where we really like make kids think. Like they're like, oh, I have nothing to be thankful for. Like just really think about that answer. Really think hard. It can even be something as small as for this dinner that we have. Um, right. So I think it's a good way to, you know, they, they say that it's, it's, it's good to teach kids gratitude at an early age, but it's really good way to ground them, to make them realize that, 
they're not so like it's not great, but they're, they're it's not horrible where they are at. at this and we've point. been baking. <laughs> That, that's been a, a, a double-edged sword. <laughs> <laughs> Have you gone into the, you know, it's full cakes or it's the bread route? Or oh, oh, we made a magnificent full cake. Oh. Double layer, yeah. icing. Wow. Every time I eat it, I feel like there's a new heart attack coming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next couple of questions. It's uh, quicker answers and whatever's the top of your head. Uh, and uh, what is the single best advice you've ever received? And it can be photo related or just life related. For one of the things that always sticks in my head, with my dad telling me was like, "You have two ears and one mouth. Listen more than you talk." And that always stuck with me. <laughs> the best one for me that I ever received is nothing is ever, no money is ever worth um, all the pain that you're, the, like the the mental headache that you're gonna go through. Yeah. And 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 we really understood that after a couple of really big jobs and working with awful clients nothing no money is really ever no amount of money is worth the headache i value my 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 mental health more than i do anything and for you ben it's a really interesting question because i'm not particularly sure yeah i mean from a photo point of view what david burnett said to me years ago be photo. That, that idea that when you see a bunch of photographers go somewhere else it has always stuck with me as a piece of advice. That's a, that's a great piece of advice right there. Um, uh, this one, it, it can be the most generic of questions, but I actually think it's one of those deep things. It's like, you know, a chef, if he doesn't know, know how to cook an egg, he's never going to become a chef. What is photography to you? Um, photography to me is uh, this reflection of my soul. It is very intrinsic to who I am as an individual. Um, I don't think I will ever be without it, but at the same time, I sometimes really hate it and resent it because it is also my occupation. And sort of the, there's a, there's a balance that I don't always, you know, get to where you have to realize that no matter what you're doing, that's also how you put the bacon on the table, the kosher bacon. And, um, <laughs> You know, so that that's that's Very really hard. Very long answer. Yeah, Definitely. go ahead. <laughs> photography to me is, uh, you know, if I were a dancer, it's my my music. It, it, photography to me is just my way of, you know, of of, of talking. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's my music. It's my dance. It's it's my rhythm. All right, we're going to go into speed round here. Are you ready okay. for it? We're going to alternate. First one's going to be uh, to you, Ben. Uh, uh, there are four of you in the family in the house right now, ranking from one being the most weirdest to the four, the not least weirdest. Who's the weirdest in your family? Mateo. Mateo. <laughs> That's number one. And then count it down to least. Caleb. No, me. Ben. Ben. <laughs> ben. 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 Caleb. Caleb. Me. Marvy. I'm the least weird. Yeah. All right. Uh, Marvy, what do you do to make your subject smile? Oh, she makes her subjects cry. I don't, really? I don't, <laughs> I haven't gotten, um, I've never called to make my subject smile. Let's just Marvy is the most emotionally manipulative person. And whenever we did a video where, even with me, where uh, she has to interview people, she makes everyone cry. She's like, I she's just like talk fif- to them. She's like I don't 15 make them per cry. 18. Like she only didn't make like three I just, people I just cry. talk to them, but I never get called. For, to, to make no, people. I make the people with one photo shoot that we did for like American Express. Marvy did all the shooting, and I was the wrangler. I came he was in, in a like tutu. pink tutus and costume. I was the one who made everyone laugh. I didn't take a single picture from that job. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, toilet paper over or under? Ooh, uh, what does uh, that mean? Over. <laughs> you can explain how you, how you put I, the toilet paper in. Do you put it in so you pull it down? Oh, over. over. Yeah, over. I know. I Everyone else, I don't understand other people. Yeah, some people put on. <laughs> I didn't know that there was another way. Yeah, some people put the Do you have a hidden ridiculous talent? Um, I used to be a marksman. Um, I trained marksman and I competed. I had a 45 caliber when I was 12, 13. I competed in the women's division. Ben, what's the creepiest thing you could say to someone while crossing him on the street? Yeah. Just <laughs> passing by. Just whisper. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> especially, <laughs> especially with this mustache. Especially with this mustache. Um, what was the last thing you watched on TV? Oh, Lock and Key. Lock and Key, yeah. Ah, nice, nice. Um, 
What's your favorite smell in the whole world? Uh, wet concrete. Yeah. Marley, what's yours? Wet grass, rain on wet grass. Uh, which TV family would be most like your own? Modern family. Modern, modern family, really? This is us? That's too depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, probably a combination of This Is Us and Modern Family. All the childhood trauma from This Is Us and all the crazy of Modern Family. I love it. And um, I want to thank you guys uh, for spending so much extra time with us. We could go on and on and on. Hopefully in the future, we'll, we'll sit down and have uh, another completely different talk with you guys. Um, I want to thank you so much. Um, and uh, where can people find your work? And, uh, and uh, hopefully, you know, take a, a course with you guys or sit in on a TED Talk or something. You got anything coming up or where can they find you? Uh, we, we actually, uh, you did have a TED Talk already. We, we have a, a talk with Adorama next week. Uh, probably the same sort of stuff. Um, but in general, there's a lot of content on our website, which is loweylacar.com. Uh, and, and we, we both have, have our Instagram accounts. Mine is just Ben Lowey <laughs> and Marvie's is Bone Tired Mom. I love it. Is there a last thought you want to leave anybody with? Uh, you know, learn business. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> learn business. And, um, and inherit, inherit some money. Inherit some money and yeah. try to practice uh, not mindfulness. If anyone says might be mindful again, I'm going to punch them in the face. Here, but, here's the one. Here's the, now I got to ask, you know, this, this will be the last question. Uh, uh, being educators and, and being in the, in the photo world and, and be having social media and, and talking to everyone, what's your biggest, biggest pet peeve question? What lips did you use? <laughs> <laughs> well, people used to ask me, like, you went to war? What's that like? like what the fuck do you think it's like? Sorry. It's like Christmas wrapped up in a warm blanket with popcorn. <laughs> Uh, anyway, what's your what's your favorite smell? What do, Mateo? What's your favorite smell? What? What's, what's your, your favorite, favorite smell? smell? Mommy's armpit. No. Right, uh, um, here's next question for you. Ready? Uh, what's the weirdest thing you've ever seen in someone's home? He everywhere on the. Floor. Oh my god, that oh. wasn't weird though. That was. This, <laughs> yeah, it was I a very it. dirty home. It was a dirty it was very dirty. The weirdest thing I've ever well. It's a weirdest experience. That is mustache. I, yeah, thanks. <laughs> I came off a mountaintop in Afghanistan, and I was sitting with a, a, a former Al Qaeda bomb maker, right? Who had like That's no fingers, and he pulled out his iPhone and started listening to a Jay Z, the Rihanna, the the New York song, and like I'm in the middle of this mountain range with this guy who used to make bombs, and we're listening to Jay Z, and that was honestly one of the weirdest experiences ever. Well, well guys, I hope to see you soon. I, I, I'm, I was definitely disappointed that we're not going to all be in, uh, in Kando together. And I got one last question for you. You ready? You ready for this one? Another one? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's solely for you, buddy. Since you just joined us, this is oh, all you. It's real. It's real. It's real. Okay, you ready? This, is, this question is all you. Of all the animals out there, who do you think of what breed of animal? It could be a cat, an elephant, would be the rudest animal. Hippopotamus. Oh, there you go. <laughs> they do seem very angry, don't they? They are. <laughs> They'll just kill you. They don't care. Guys, thank you. May All right, your family thank be you. safe. Go eat dinner, and we'll talk All soon. Right. All right. Bye. Thank you. Take Thanks care, guys. Bye. Bye.